The next general technique, whose main ideas we are going to illustrate on a toy example of solving the travel and sales and problem, is called the branch and bound technique. It is quite similar actually to the backtracking technique, but backtracking is usually used for solving decision problems, while the branch and bound technique is usually used to solve optimization problems. Its main idea is as follows. Again, we are going to grow a huge tree, which uh, in the end is going to represent the search space, that is the space of all candidate solutions. So we are going to grow this, uh, this solutions piece by piece. But at each step, instead of doing this naively, in each, in each point in this tree, we check whether the current branch, whether the current per partial solution that we have, has any chances to be extended to a solution which is better than the one that we currently found, which is better than the best one that we've currently seen. If it has no chances, we cut this branch immediately. We do not continue it if we realized that it cannot be extended to a solution which is better than the best one found so far. We illustrate the main idea of the branch and bound technique on a toy example. So consider the following graph consisting of four vertices. The graph is complete, meaning that there is an edge between any pair of vertices. One way to solve this is to consider all possible cycles. For this, we consider the following tree. So we start at vertex one. From vertex one, we can go to, to either of the following three vertices, to the vertex two, to the vertex three, or to the vertex four, right? From the vertex two, we are allowed to go either to vertex 3 or to vertex 4. We are not allowed to go back to the vertex 1 because we need a cycle that visits each vertex exactly one, each vertex exactly once, and so on. So we then try to extend each possible partial solution with each possible variant. So from vertex 3, we, we actually need to go to vertex 4, and from vertex 4, we have no choice but to return to, to vertex 1. So when we see that there is uh, that this is a full cycle visiting each vertex exactly one, we compute its uh, its total length. So in this case, it is it is 19, and we do this for uh, for all possible cases. Here we have seven, here we have 18, here we have seven again, 18 again, and 19 again. So we have actually pairs of equals numbers here because the corresponding leaves, for example, this leaf. And this leaf, they actually correspond to the same cycle, but traversed in two different directions. We can either go this way or this way. This gives actually the same cycle, of course, but with the same total length. Now let's do it uh, in a more smart, smart way. Let's grow the same tree, but let's try to compute the total par the total length of total partial of our current partial solution uh, on the fly instead of computing this at, at the leaf. Namely, initially we stay at the vertex 1. So the total length is 0, then we go, for example, to the vertex 2. At this point, the total length is 1. From vertex 1, we, from vertex 2, we try to go to vertex 3. This gives us total length 6. So this is our current path. We go from, from 1 to 2, and then from 2 to 3. The current, uh, the current uh, total length is 6. We then try to go to vertex 4. This is the only actually possibility. So our total uh, length is 9. And then we return back be uh, to the vertex 1 because we already visited all other vertices. So this is the first full cycle that we discovered. So its total length is 19. So we marked that the best total length that we've seen so far is 19. Then we go back, then we backtrack actually to to consider other possibilities. The, the first vertex, on a, the last vertex on our path when there was some possibilities is the vertex, the vertex 2. Instead of going to vertex, uh, to vertex 3, we might want to go to vertex 4. This gives us uh, the, the total, the current length is 3, then we continue, now the current length is, is 6, and finally when we get to, to the leaf of this tree, we see that the current uh, that the current cycle give us, gives us total length 7. So we update our, our variable which is responsible for the best uh, solution found so far. It is 7. Okay? Then again we backtrack. Now the last vertex where there is still a possibility to go to another vertex is 
is the root of this tree. So we try to go from one to vertex three, but not to two. So the, the length of the current solution is one. Then we, from three, we, we go to six. From six, we go to four. And now we see that the length of the total of the current partial solution is already greater. So eight is greater than seven. So our current solution is not going to be extended to something which is better than something that we found so far. So there is no, I mean, no sense to extend the current branch further. So we just go back. So we return back to this vertex and we try to, to go from three to, to another vertex, namely to four. Then when we go to four, we discover another copy of the same cycle. So its length is seven. Then uh, it doesn't update our variable. So we just backtrack, we go, we go to the root and we try to visit the vertex four. But already when we go from one to four, we see that we already traversed the edge of, of length 10, right? The length of this partial solution is already 10. It is already worse than the solution that we found before of total length seven. So there is just no sense of extending this branch and we cut it immediately. So if we do, if we do this a little bit smarter, then we do not need to go through all possible candidate solutions. So this is the one small branch that we cut and this is another small branch that we don't need. Okay, so in general, it can save a lot of time. In our example, in our toy example, we consider it probably the most simple uh, lower bound for estimating the size of any extension of a partial solution. The modern TSP solvers that are able to handle graphs with thousands of vertices use smarter heuristics for lower bounding uh, an optimal solution in, in a given graph. We provide two examples which are still simple enough and not so smart as used in, in state-of-the-art solvers. So the first lower bound says that in any graph, the total length of any travel and salesman cycle is at least the following expression, one half uh, times the sum over all vertices, where for, for each vertex we compute the sum of two uh, edges of minimum distance adjacent to this, uh, to this vertex. Well, why is that? Well, for this, consider, consider an optimal cycle. Note that if we just consider edges in this cycle, then the total length of this cycle just equals to, to, to this expression, where instead of two minimum length cycle, two minimum length edges for, for each vertex, we use just two edges that are adjacent to it. Right? Just because in this expression, each edge in the sum, this edge is counted exactly twice. For example, this edge is going to be counted one time for uh, once for this vertex and once for this vertex. For this reason, we have one, one half here. So if we just use instead of two adjacent edges in an optimal cycle, we use two edges of minimum. Uh, of minimum distance, of minimum length in the initial graph, this is obviously a lower bound for the length of, of an optimal cycle. And it already can give good result, good results in practice. Another lower bound is that in any graph with non-negative edge weights, or edge lengths, the, the total length of an optimal cycle is at least the, the length of the minimum spanning tree. Why is that? Well, this is just because if you have an optimal, an optimal cycle, and then you remove, you remove some edge from it. Then what you get is a path in this tree, and this path is a, is a spanning tree in the, in this graph, right? So, but it is not the minimum spanning, probably not the minimum spanning tree. So the weight of this path is at least the weight of the minimum spanning tree, which means that the length of the cycle or the weight of the cycle is at least the weight of the minimum spanning tree. Well, this concludes our module, our lesson on exact algorithms. In the next lesson, we are going to consider approximate algorithms. So these are algorithms that work in polynomial time and return solutions which might not be optimal, but they are guaranteed to be close to optimal.